Hi everybody, welcome to A Fern Between Us, episode five. We are wearing our brand new uh, Vivoc face masks. Ooh, sexy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they are on back order uh, just a few more days and we'll get more. We sold out within two hours. So thank you everybody that ordered them. We are selling them <laughs> at cost. Uh, but uh, we are hoping to make sure everybody's safe and uh, also we'd like to have our logo on your face. <laughs> <laughs> That sounds dirty. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, God, we're like 10 seconds in. All right. So uh, we are two of the four owners of Vivoc Winery. I'm Michelle. I'm Jesse. And uh, we are joined on the uh, little stream of comments by our partners, uh, Liliana and Chris. And uh, while we love having you guys comment while we're going through the show, we do get back to those later. We are really a bare bones operation, and so we can't answer those questions right now. Oh. I'm drinking. <laughs> it's happy hour. <laughs> yeah, it's happy hour, finally. Woof. Man, it's been a long week already. Thank goodness tomorrow's a weekend for me. <laughs> Every day is kind of a weekend. I don't know. Every day is kind of a weekend for right? a lot of people. Yeah, you're actually working a lot more. So a little check-in, you're doing a lot of stuff. You bottled today? Bottled some Refosco today, which is awesome. It'll be out in a little bit. Um, uh, like three months. Three months, yeah, a long time. Uh, or, yeah. And then um, uh, this week we finished our new well, which we're really excited Ooh. about. We're finally, we're actually using our new well water, which is kind of cool. Uh, well, how about you? I don't remember. <laughs> Too much drinking. <laughs> you know, Karen has become a real drinker. And so those of you that are following the Instagram feed, um, you know, she's kind of problematic. But, uh, you know, we're working through it. I personally am getting a lot done. Um, it's just Karen. She's in the way. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, we've all heard that before. <laughs> it's her. I don't know why we have missing bottles of wine. She's mm. got two new flowers. Look. Oh, hey. Are you flirting? <laughs> you might end up I didn't with say a... D flower. I said flower. <laughs> <laughs> we might end up with a me too. Um, what are we drinking today, babe? Yes. So let's jump right into our emotional sanitizer wine tasting. We have the 1725 Dry Riesling. Mm. If you guys aren't fans of Riesling yet, there's something wrong with you. That's, that's it. They're, the world of Rieslings is huge and amazing. And most of the time, uh, you've been introduced to them as very sweet wines or poorly made wines. And uh, the thing that happens as you get introduced to great Rieslings is the acidity, the, mm -hmm. um, an oily component in some from, uh, Germany. Um, there's some amazing yep. key points to what makes it a s incredible food wine. Oh. And, uh, so tell us about the 1725 Riesling that you have here. We've been growing Riesling since, since we started planting grapes basically. But, um, it is a great, nice, dry, we do it in a totally dry style um, when we don't do it as a late harvest, which occasionally we do, but not every year. Um, but the, uh, this, this, this Riesling is totally dry, totally bone dry, nice, light body style. Um, you said bone. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, oh no, I got you started now. This is bad. Um, uh, now I'm off my train of thought. Um, <laughs> Uh, as well as ours, I would absolutely try anything from the Mosul River in Germany. Um, those, the, uh, uh, the German Rieslings are just insane. Get a cabinet, start, spelled with a K, and it's, um, uh, those the are... The driest level. Those are kind of the driest level. It's a little off dry half the time, but it's 100% just fabulous and fabulous food wine. And this is another wine from our 1725 vineyard, so we... Yeah been sprinkling those through. Um, it is the vineyard that's around our tasting room, which is such a beautiful spot. And right now everything's flowering and gorgeous. And we're so sorry that you're not able to enjoy our patio right now. 
Um, all right, so Riesling, it's your next homework assignment is go find some great Rieslings and enjoy them. Ours, definitely try it against a um, Alsatian, definitely try it against Ooh. a uh, German. And then, you know, it's fun to also try some of the other New World ones. There's great ones coming out of mm -hmm. the cooler climate zones, which is what you're kind of looking for. So, yeah, you know, if climate. it gets too warm, it becomes a really dense uh, fruit flavor. And that's where you start getting into the, like the sweeter notes that I think a lot of people don't like about Riesling. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want a warm climate Riesling. You want cool climate. So high altitude or northern or you know yeah yeah what and i said <laughs> <laughs> what uh what uh, what else we we have here today uh man the longer we're in quarantine the sillier <laughs> this stuff gets right um uh, so our red for today is the abbott red abbott is one of our estate vineyards that we have been lucky enough to take over and that is uh the abbott family that started that vineyard and uh, has completely different grapes than the 1725 vineyard, which... Even though we're only five miles away. I find, I mean, I am a wine geek and I do know that, but I find that so fascinating that just a small dip in uh, elevation and then sitting next to the Rio Grande um, creates a different microclimate and then we're able to get these totally different grapes. So this is a Syrah and Cabernet Franc blend. Mm -hmm. And... I am, I love Cabernet Francs when they're done well. They can also be done really terribly and mm -hmm. they're really green and thin and awful. But yeah. when you find a good one, oh, and I really I, love the one that you and Chris make. I even like those green thin ones though too. <laughs> There's, I don't know, Cabernet Francs are awesome. Either way, I don't know. I, are are I know we that, ever really turning down a wine period? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm sure the snobs would like, are are gasping right now, but I'm uh, but I think it, I think Cabernet Franc even in its green form is awesome. <laughs> if it's balanced, right? Mm -hmm. I mean exactly. that's that is something that uh, when I judge at international wine competitions, when I sit at a panel, that that's a conversation. Um, does this wine exhibit the uh, nuances that you're expecting to find in? a young Cabernet Franc, for example, but still be balanced and still afford being awarded as a nice wine and, um, you know, versus what the ideal is. So yeah. that's always an interesting concept. Yeah, exactly. So um, Syrah and Cabernet Franc, how did you guys decide to blend those together? <laughs> um, and the way the Portuguese decided to blend things together mm. and that is <laughs> in that you have a certain amount of red grapes and you need to make a whole batch <laughs> so uh, really the, scientific that, <laughs> yeah this year the Cabernet Franc and the Syrah were both lower in yield and this year being 2018 uh, they were both lower in yield they would have produced too small of a lot and we said you know what let's uh, let's ferment them separately but then we'll you know we'll, we blend them together for the final wine um, so that you know we're not sitting there on 50 cases of a wine and it sells out you know you can't even release it to the wine club at that point or whatever so they ended up together we knew they would pair well together um, the Merlot was a bigger it was a big enough lot that you it was mean, able to be, no the Merlot the, the Abbott Merlot that year oh, was a big enough so lot that we could be, be its separate. own, its own um, wine exactly so it's not a blend of all three or something it's a you know whatever gotcha anyway <laughs> well, I love yeah, it. I think it, it turned out really, really beautiful. Yeah. It has, um, you know, so many people think of Shiraz, the Australian big, jammy, bold, high alcohol. And this is not. This is more like a Southern Rhone uh, or Northern Rhone style wine um, that has those kind of smoky nuances from the Syrah. It can be a little... Um, Tobacco-ish. Yeah. And, yeah. And um, it offers itself really beautifully to the oomph that a Cabernet Franc can uh, give it. And I think this combination yeah. is just so incredible. And we just sent this out to Wine Club. If any of you guys are Wine Club members, um, I believe you got this last month. Is that right? I believe, yeah. 
It was so, the Abbott Red and the Merlot, right? Which were now sold out of the Merlot. No, that was uh, that was something different. The, no, this this one this uh, last month, like uh, uh, in March. <laughs> Maybe I don't know. Whatever. What day is uh, it? Who am I? <laughs> I don't know. We sent y'all wine. <laughs> All right. Enough about wine. <laughs> <laughs> We are going to jump into some of the questions, which is super fun. All right. So question number one, what are legs and why do they make a wine better? And that's from Sage Luna. They don't, they're not, uh, they, they don't mean anything. They're just um, a chemical reaction between the glycerol Glyc and the air temperature and the glass, the viscosity in the glass. So all wine will have some amount of legs. They look beautiful. They're awesome. They mean nothing. Um, it's not a. Uh, it's not a. Uh, um, a lot of science has gone into winemaking and um, how to test and profile what's happening in a wine that wasn't happening many years ago. Exactly. And so they they were excited. They thought that that meant something. But glycerins in all wines, the temperature of the room, the temperature of the glass, the soap that you use to wash the glass, the it's humidity, all going to change. The thickness of the glass, the, uh, all the so stuff. So the same wine could have different legs in different glasses. And um, it's fun to talk about. <laughs> but yeah, no, nope, no, nope, just stop talking about it. <laughs> all right, so next question is, What's your opinion on boxed wine, especially when there mm. isn't a large selection of options where you are? And this is from David. I love this question because a lot of people think that anytime you have a wine professional, especially if you hear that crazy word sommelier, that <laughs> we are too snobby to drink cheap wine. Oh my gosh. We lived on boxed wine in, in Colombia. It was amazing. They had the best boxed wine ever. They had like a wall of box wines and every day we'd go and pick out three liters of wine. <laughs> you know. It was kind of like being in quarantine, only we were in Colombia on vacation. Um, but uh, the thing is, is that other countries are doing a great job with boxed wine. Uh, if you can get and your hands And ours as well. Ours it's as starting well. to. It, yeah. Over the years, it has gotten better and better. But, um, yeah. you know, Argentina, mm -hmm. uh, Australia, New Zealand, there's so many that are coming... Um, out of these great countries, really dynamite wines, and they box them, it's so much easier to just pour yourself a glass. I don't understand this philosophy <laughs> of just a glass, but I know there's plenty of you out if, there that just want a glass. If all you want is a glass or two, or this maybe even three, it. it's a fabulous way, and there are great box wines. Um, I wouldn't say incredible box wines, but there's, but there's wines that are, solid solid solidly good wines um in, so don't be you know, afraid to boxes. try yeah. them out yeah try them out and see what you like um the only problem that i always have with them is the same thing that i have with most of the least expensive wines and that's that they um have a tendency to be overly manufactured so they don't taste like grape grapes and grape wine sometimes enough mm -hmm. like I, they're, mm -hmm. they're too but the box itself provides a low cost packaging so you can get a higher quality uh, wine for the money um, in most in most circumstances yeah so definitely definitely look into those yeah don't be afraid and um, you know are you gonna vouch for any specific ones right the second or just just try it yeah yeah just, um, just play around you know what I would recommend <laughs> is that so uh, these international wine competitions box wines get set in too so you can actually find on a website like uh, San Francisco Chronicle, International Wine, uh, uh, they don't, they San don't Francisco Chronicle, Chronicle, Chronicle Wine Competition. Wine competition. <laughs> <laughs> They're Canada, US, and Mexico, so not completely international as far as uh, that kind of scope goes. But um, they're a great one to look at for mass market wines that um what's the best when you go to the grocery store that you mm. can count on and uh box wines fall into that category and there's some great ones that are winning some great awards so you can look it up online too like the 10 best boxed wines you know or oh, whatever yeah. mm -hmm. and and, th and that'll, that that'll be, be a good starting <laughs> a good starting point 
Maybe we don't have them in New Mexico. Maybe we do. But we also ran good. into this when we were in Belize. Box wines yeah. tended to be better. Don't than Belize the it. Wines. Don't. By the way, don't Belize it. Oh. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> we got We got to keep moving through these, baby. <laughs> okay. So uh, three. Uh, why don't you have a Sauvignon Blanc? Have you tried before? Is it possible to make a good one in New Mexico? And this question comes from Noel. I love oh. this question. <laughs> I am a big Sauvignon Blanc fan. Oh, this one gets me all the ruffled feathers <laughs> for, for, for a few reasons. Okay, we did, we did. Sauvignon Blanc was our best selling white wine for a long time. We, um, I never personally liked it that much. We had one or two decent vintages. The one that you made. The one that we made, yeah. I love Sauvignon Blancs in general. And Sauvignon Blancs are insane. Um, uh, you know, just about from everywhere. Um, I have not tasted great, to my estimation, I have not tasted great New Mexico Sauvignon Blancs. I don't know if we're not growing it in the right place yet or whatever. The reason that we personally don't do it is partly because of that and partly because Southern Wine and Spirits is a horrible, horrible company. <laughs> Whoa! Um, and that's a story for another day, probably. And that's what you get when we're live. And I would have just edited that out. But um, yeah, that's um, yeah. I'm so happy you asked that, Noel. <laughs> um, so we do love Sauvignon Blancs. We are pretty picky about the characteristics that we want to see in them, and. Um, I always liked the one that uh, the ones that Jesse and Chris made. I thought they were really lovely, but um, they tended to be a little heavy, a little um, maybe over extracted, you know. So the tropical fruit was dominant, which um, could be that we didn't know what we we're doing just just yet with whites as much too. Maybe we could do a better job these days. Were we legally allowed to try? <laughs> <laughs> So let's move on. Um, and the fourth question, we're just going to do uh, four today. The fourth question is, what about doing dream wine analysis? This is from Diane. So I would like you to tell me about a dream and I will analyze it according to wine. Oh my gosh. What have you? You want me to tell you a dream that I've had recently? Okay. Uh, be careful, <laughs> sir. If it's not this PG, I don't want to hear it. You mean I have PG dreams? <laughs> Diane, I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> you should have given me a heads up on this one. I can't nope, remember my dream. No, that's why it's fun. <laughs> no, oh, man. Oh, let's see. Uh, do you remember me telling you a dream? They, my dreams have been all over the place with this. Uh, I know, they've been crazy. With this COVID thing. I don't know if it's... um. I mean, not that I have it, but just the, I don't know. Everything's different, so everything's different in here in the night, I guess. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, 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 um. I did have a dream. They're super chaotic. Okay, the, what about the one that, okay, I had one. I had yeah. a good one. Uh, the other day I was in that, I was. I told you about it. I was in that boat and it was super, and it, it started like, uh, it was on super rough waters and then it ended up like, hitting waves and they kept on crashing into the boat. And then um, later in that dream, Maddox and Chablis were, uh, my, oh, my niece yeah. and nephew were, um, were cruising around really good. I don't know if they were swimming or boogie boarding or surfing or, you know, but they were like really good at it because they'd been on vacation for months on end and I was just joining those guys. <laughs> and it's like, man, you guys are really good at this, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and I was trying to keep up with them. And they're, you know, they're uh, nine and 12 right now, just to give you an idea. Okay. okay. <laughs> what does that mean, babe? Yeah. So I think um, trying to keep up <laughs> clearly. <laughs> like I can't, not... I can't drink as much as I you could, should be able to do as like a nine or 12 year old. Is that what you're saying? Well, oh, I was thinking more <laughs> as much as like Karen, who's oh. home alone drinking all day. <laughs> Damn you, Karen. <laughs> so to the moon no yeah oh <laughs> funny reference um but uh so clearly you're feeling that i'm out you're I'm always out i'm trying why are you drinking so fast i'm trying <gasps> to keep up trying to keep mm -hmm, mm -hmm. see i was right right yes so 
Um, <laughs> feeling inadequate when you're looking at how much Karen can drink. I think mm. that's important. I think the ocean definitely is a symbol of um, being overwhelmed, overwhelmed by your wine choices. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good attempt at pairing there, babe. <laughs> I don't know, Diane. We gave it our best shot. I don't know if anybody is going to want to send in any dreams after that. But um, you're welcome to if uh, you want to see us flail over it. Um, as we come to the end of our show today, a couple of things. Next week, we're going to have another guest. It's going to be my sister, who is the uber-talented hairstylist, for Marie Fleur Salon in Taos. She studied in Paris, she studied in New York, and she is a hair artiste, as I like to say. Uh, she's gonna give us some tips on how to stay beautiful while we're trapped at home. So things like, is there an over-the-counter hair dye that won't ruin our hair when we go back to the salon? Um, tips on how to apply it, maybe how to, um, Cut your spouse's hair. He might be cutting my hair. I don't know. <laughs> but that. so that's gonna be really, really fun. So <laughs> we, next week we should actually do that on air. <laughs> well, we'll see. Um, <laughs> but uh, it's gonna be fantastic. So if you have specific questions for a dynamite hairstylist that you would like answered on air next week, let us know. We'd be happy to add those in. And uh, again, the masks are sold out right now, but they should be back in within another week and a half. And so you can call and pre-order now and we'll ship it out with whatever wine you're ordering or uh, you can come and pick them up during our pickup hours, which are one to five daily still. Uh, last thing is please go to our YouTube channel, subscribe. We just uploaded all kinds of crazy videos that you're going to have a blast watching. And that's going to be the only place for some of our videos to appear. Uh, do you have any trivia? Yeah. Fun it is facts. now called trivia. <laughs> it's not tips and no advice. more. advice. <laughs> I can't take him anyway. No. No more tips. <laughs> do you have any trivia advice? You know, actually, uh, one of the trivia things that I thought was really interesting was Matt uh, sent in a uh, note saying that, was it North Dakota? North Dakota doesn't allow women to make wine without the express consent of their husband. Ooh, I it's like that one. It's actually illegal. I like that one. No, I don't like that one. No. <laughs> More wine's better. No. It's yeah. really bad. And I'm really bad. Psh, you know better than that. <laughs> All right, I've, guys. I've got, I've got, I've got tips oh, I'm sorry. And, and trivia. I've had to cut you off Jeez. every week with your damn tips. She's horrible. All right, so um, uh, one tip for wine drinking. <laughs> one advice? I don't know. One tip for wine drinking. Hold your wine glass by the stem. If you hold it by the, by the, by the bowl, it's just going to heat it up. Your white wine tastes worse. Your red wine tastes worse. Um, we're already drinking our red wines too hot. Um, our white That's wines, our, our white wines get to the right temperature uh, as we drink them. They start out too cold, but they get to the right temperature. Um, if you can hold it by the bit, you know, either by the base or the stem, that's perfect. And then uh, a, a fun fact. Yes. This shirt used to be your shirt and I took it over. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> anyway, guys. <laughs> uh, well, that is a fun oh, fact. <laughs> last thing, what's what's our what's our wines for next week? Oh, um, what do you want to taste next week, baby? <laughs> oh, you haven't figured it out yet. I figured it on your out all the other things. You could at least oh, yeah. help pick the wines. I what do you want to taste? I don't know. I don't even know what we've tasted already. Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, we haven't done Tempranillo Ooh, and yeah, let's do that. Uh, Sangiovese. Not Sangiovese, right? The second. Okay. <laughs> let's do. Um, why don't we do Divino and Diablo? Oh, there we go. Let's yeah, do Divino and Diablo. That's what we're doing. Divino and Diablo. We will see you next week, Thursday at 5. 
Again, please go check out our YouTube channel and subscribe. That's how we're going to get better at this. Cheers, guys. Cheers. <laughs>